next to the student services report? We do, Mr. Figueroa and um, Ms. Otano. A lot of books there. They're going to read each of those to you. Oh, good. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> everyone and uh, I want to thank Dr. Valeski, President Simmons and the board for allowing us to talk a little bit this evening about the student services department and what we do so this evening the student services department so I, I'll tell you up front is the student assistance specialists which really deal with the social and emotional aspects and the school counselors, which also deal with that, but they also deal with uh, the academic and the career readiness pieces and components. Tonight, uh, Ms. Sultana will talk to us about the uh, school counselors and the career and um, academic components, and I will talk about the social and emotional um, pieces with the student assistance specialists. Okay, so the first thing, I just want to talk a little bit about what a student assistant specialist does. And as you can see, they wear many hats. Very involved in many of those aspects of what makes a student's social and emotional life hopefully better. I do want to talk a little bit about the anti-bullying specialist. That's one of the main roles of the student assistant specialist. Okay? They have to and are involved in any and all HIV investigations and they also do all of the HIV reporting. They also co-chair the safety team. Now the safety team is made up of the principal, student assist assistant specialist, a parent, and also other members of the school uh, community. Now they have to meet anywhere from four to five times a year based on what we ask them to do the state says they need to meet twice a year. What they do is they review, and I think you could see some of the work they did over there. That's each school's representation of what the safety team's um, evaluation of what our programs are in front of you over there. Okay? So they get together, they look at programming the safety teams, they look at trends, HIV trends. And we try to make sure that if we see certain trends that are occurring, that we do what we need to do to make them stop to make sure that we have the supports for the students that we need in each building uh, throughout the district. Okay, and as you can see, there are many other, including individual group counseling, uh, risk assessment. So let me talk to you about some of the areas that I thought were noteworthy, some of the data, data that I want to talk to you about tonight. One of the things are our students and our mental health evaluations, our risk assessments, uh, they were very close to the year prior in terms of numbers. <clears throat> Our number of DCP and P reports at the elementary level were the same this past year. However, at the high school level, I'm sorry, the secondary level, they, were, they went from 36 to 53 reports of DCP and P, which is formerly DIFUS. Drug screening uh, and positive screens. Uh, the year before, uh, this year actually, we had 52 screens and we had 35 that were positive. Compared to last year, we had 53 screens and 34. So the numbers are very similar to the past two years. Now, let me give you some of the reasons uh, for some of these increases. Number one, students and staff are being trained more in terms of what to look for, in terms of uh, even students being able to self-disclose. In addition, our counselors and our student assistant specialists, specialists have be, become even more part of the relationship building um, that they, as they can in each one of the schools. So students are feeling more comfortable and they are self-disclosing. Some of the things that we are doing to address the increases, number one, we've increased our drug and alcohol uh, programming and our health classes. 
In addition, our counseling staff, now that they have a slightly less caseload, they're getting that opportunity to spend more of that time with kids in need and working closer with the student assistance specialists. So we've seen that as a real positive. Uh, other areas that went down as far as our HIV investigations, we had in the elementary level, we had six confirmed uh, out of 68 investigations. And at the secondary level, we had 32 confirmed HIVs out of 107 investigations. Now the student assistance specialists, as I mentioned earlier, uh, they're <coughs> instrumental in looking at those trends from the previous year, looking at what's presently happening, and trying to make change, trying to make things better. And no school is going to be the same as the other. If you look at uh, the binders and you look through them, you'll see that one school will be different than another based on the needs of that school and based on what the safety team has come up with in terms of the, uh, the needs and the programming uh, of, for those kids in those, in those, in those schools. Okay. So in terms of programming, all right, our mentor programs, which have been very successful, what we do at the end of every school year, we ask teachers and staff members to identify any students that may need or may be helped by having a positive adult role model in their life the following year. We also ask staff, anyone that may be interested, especially those positive staff members that want to come out and that want to do the extra you know for our students as so many of, a, of our staff do they will also sign up as mentors and there are programming that we have throughout the year even after school that helps the two build relationships and we found that this has been a very successful um, component for students in need having someone that's positive in addition to their student assistant specialist of course and their guidance counselor and their teachers and administration as is someone else that they can also go to um, and simply talk to and that person will know where to steer them uh, to get additional help and supports. Our PBSIS, Positive Behavioral Supports in our schools, has also been very positive in supporting our students um, in terms of positive environment in our schools. Of sources of strength, which I know uh, that uh, Ms. Sultana is just dying to talk about, so she'll be talking more about that later on and some of the things we're doing. Uh, our assembly programs have had great success, and in addition, our parent universities. Um, we would like to have even more parents come out to them, but we've seen, seen some success. We've had some parents that were really excited about what they had learned there. In terms of staff development and training, what we do is we sit down and we look throughout the year. Now, each individual safety team will be looking at the data in their school, but as a district, we look at what our trends are, what things we may need. We've This uh, past year, what we did is we updated the crisis manual procedure review, uh, which is really for uh, is situations of crisis, when staff is involved in, in, in situations of crisis and how to proceed. Respect Week and Violence Week, that's worked out. We do that during the summer, and we uh, take care of the programming for that, again, based on district, school, and state initiatives because that is part of the law, that each district must do programming for those weeks. Our safety tr team training was a big part of what we focused on this uh, past year. Uh, HIV video training for parents. Every parent had the chance at every school to understand better what an HIV looks like and also what <coughs> conflict is, how we handle it and what the process is. And that was a real positive. And of course, the social cognition training and the superflex, which is given to all of our elementary schools, K to two throughout the district. Okay, so that's just some of the staff development and training. I just have a quick question. Sure, please. How, how did the parents uh, get to the HIV video training? Is that something? That was a back to school night. That was shared with them back to school night. And I believe it's also posted on Moodle. So, okay. What I'd like to do is give. Uh, Ms. Sultana, a chance to come up, talk a little bit about uh, the school counseling department and also how the school counseling department and the student assistant specialists work together, um, again, for our students to create a better school climate and also to not only um, look at social, emotional, and academic issues, but also just the whole child in, in general. Okay. Hello, thank you for having me. Um, so a role of a school counselor uh, is a little bit different than it used to be in the past. Something that um, 
I think that as a district that we pride ourselves on is that we do have the social, emotional, and behavioral piece to our school counselors that many districts that have more than you know our, a caseload, our caseload cannot get to that piece. So they hit on the academics and they're not able to get their know, to know their students the way that we are in East Brunswick, that we're able to. Um, so a role of a school counselor, they do interv uh, inter individual interviews um, and provide counseling, individual counseling based on the student's needs. They also work very closely with the student as uh, assistant specialist. So if there is a deeper need that the counselor needs support with, they can reach out to the student, um, the SAC in the building. We also do a lot of academic college and career goal setting and follow up. So starting all the way down in sixth grade, we bring out Naviance and students are start getting familiar with this program that carries them all the way up through 12th grade and into college. So we start really young on what we're going to do and how we're going to figure out what our likes are, what we enjoy doing, and how that can kind of prepare us to pick what we want to do when we grow up. Um, we provide group counseling, so each counselor does, runs about two groups a year, usually with the student assistant specialist or with another counselor, it's usually two counselors per group, and that's based on what kind of data we feel uh, is given to us from the year before. So Hammershold talk, talks to SAC counselors in the elementary schools, Churchill talks to the, uh, the counselors at Hammershold, and the high school talks to Churchill, and it's based on is it a big group of students that may have lost a parent. We had a couple years ago, it was a, a large number of students that had uh, a recent passing of a parent, so we had a, uh, a group, a bereavement group for those students. And it's based on their needs, so every year it's a little bit different. We're starting to use Google Forms to send to the counselors and the teachers to see what kind of feedback we can get from the needs that they think their students might um, you know, need some coping skills for. We do large classroom lessons, so I'll do a whole piece on Naviance, but um, all of the counselors push into different classrooms, whether it's the computer literacy class in eighth grade, or the health class, or an English class at the high school, we make sure that we're able to touch base with a large presentation to all students, in, in, in addition to individual one-on-one -on -one, um, lessons with each student. And then um, they serve as the case coordinator for INRS. So intervention and referral services, also utilizing RTI, which is you know, kind of the next tier of when the student might need a little bit more services or accommodations within the classroom. Working with the teachers on a panel of, um, it's a, usually a school psychologist or an LDTC a school counselor, the SAC counselor, a grade level administrator, and um, me if I'm available to sit on a committee to see what the student may need. And then we also do attendance plans. Um, we're also utilizing WebDesk, which is a part of Genesis that has helped us kind of create a list of at-risk students, and it's very neat for those that are geeky in technology. It will um, give you a list every day of the student that's out, how many absences they've had, how that's correlating to their grades. So it's kind of a nice way to track all of your students and see who may need a little bit more support than um, you know the rest of your, your um, caseload. <clears throat> Career exploration, so this is the Naviance piece. So we're really looking forward to presenting to you hopefully in this, in this next year on Naviance. Um, it makes my geeky little heart kind of beat quickly because it is so informative to all the different universities and just kind of gives you an idea of what you may like. Like I didn't, it told me I should be a farmer. I don't know, you know, if that's correct or not, but I do, I do like eating organic. There's, but there's still time for it. It's still time for me, right? I'm young. So um, we start all the way down in sixth grade. So they go inside and they take a, a um, like a inventory of what they like. So it's not like I have to sit down and do this lesson on learning what I'm going to do when I'm 18 years old, but it goes into like asking them questions about how they learn. Do you like playing with Play-Doh? Like are you somebody who works better when you're using your hands? Are you somebody that can hear something and repeat it back? So it really goes into teaching them self-awareness about how they learn, which helps them in the classroom. That goes right into career key for next year. So every year builds on each other to kind of help kind of get them to a place where they'll understand what they're going to do after they leave, they leave us um, in 12th grade. But in grade 7, they do the career key and cluster finder, where they can kind of look through different um, activities, different um, maybe hobbies, things that people do to kind of help open up what they might like to do in electives. And the kids love it. They get to see kind of what Mr. Scanlon was showing. Um, Maybe a student that never was introduced to STEM before might find something on there that they're interested in. So the next year they might look to take that as an elective. And it also kind of gives us an idea of 
maybe what we should be guiding them as because we're able to go into school counselors and see what their results are. <coughs> when they get to eighth grade, they do a road trip nation, which is um, they can click on different job descriptions, they can click on an entrepreneur and see like what schools they went to, what they took in high school, how much money they make, and they all go to the money right away um, to see how much money their potential is. And then it's kind of fun for them to see each different state, how much money those jobs make in each state. So it opens up their eyes to see like the differences in the, you know, where they're going to go to school and so on. That builds right into eighth grade which builds into ninth grade, so every single year it takes what they did the year before and gives them a little bit more catering to what they might be interested in. But at any time, they can go back in, retake a test, you know, we all change a lot between sixth and ninth grade, so they can go in and redo it, and we allow them to do that with us individually, not just in groups. So in ninth grade, they go into um, already starting a resume. So you'd think that's a little bit young, but most of them don't remember what they had for dinner the night before. So they're not <laughs> going to remember in 11th grade what they did in 9th grade. So we make sure they're filling in the activities they're doing at home, maybe volunteer work. Um, in 9th grade, we start our volunteer program where we're really talking to students about what um, kind of opportunities we have within the community for volunteering. So right away, they start with their resume. They make an academic resume and they make a... Um, a job resume. I know it's a little scary, 14 years old, looking at jobs, but it starts. Uh, we move into 10th grade where they do, um, they have completed now a Holland Code, which is a personality test, which is um, kind of asks some questions about what they, like, what they enjoy to read. Uh, do they enjoy bike riding? Do they enjoy being outside? Are they more of a video game kid? You know, we have like a thousand students that click on that they want to be a gamer when they grow up and then they see how much money they make and how hard it is to get that job and they kind of go with set an option B. But it also shows them a little bit about what their world can be like when they leave. Uh, it goes right into 10th grade, which kind of really starts showing them all those jobs that they liked, all those different activities they liked and hobbies, where they can find that in a school or where they can find that in a career. So that's where it kind of takes a shift into bringing them to a place where they're um, channeling what they're going to do after school. And in that year, they can look at, OK, so it said that I, I really do want to be a gamer. So they click on that, and it'll tell them all the universities that are in the area that they may want to go to because they're good at producing you know, people who come out being gamers. I'm not really a game person. but. They are. So it kind of gives them an idea. But they also can click on, you know what, I don't want to be that far from East Brunswick. I want to be within 20 minutes of my mother. So they can click on, I only want to be 10 miles away. Then they can go and say, well, you know what, like I always want to do crew. So they can click on, I want, I want a school that has a crew team. And they can go to and really cater it down to exactly what they want and what they're looking for. And it'll advise them, you know, this meets 80% of your criteria. So it goes into such detail that we're really able to, it's almost a little bit scary, you know, like Big Brother is, but it's able to give them an idea <laughs> of what they what might have not looked at before. So that's a really, um, that's a neat step when they get to see that. 11th grade goes into super match where they're really putting in their scores, grades that they have, all of those other personality tests and things and catering to what careers, colleges they may be interested in. And that starts giving them exact universities that they may be interested in applying to. It'll give them their reach schools, their safety schools, it'll give them all of that. And then they can change it, switch it out based on you know, recommendations, but that really is the year that it gives them what they should be looking for. And then by 12th grade, we really want them all set up with where they're going, what they're doing. So Naviance has become a really big part of the school counseling program in East Brunswick. Um, it does kind of like make your geeky heart flutter. So I really hope we get to present to you and you all get to take these uh, tests because you will come out of it thinking like, like I got farmer, you know, you'll come out, but maybe I need to have a garden or something. This might be something I'm, I'm interested in. But it really has been something that um, has grown a lot in East Brunswick. We all, um, we're doing counselor universities, so the people who are really good at Naviance are teaching other, other um, buildings about what we're doing and making sure that everybody's kind of has the same language and transitioning to ease that, um, you know, Hammersholt to Churchill to high school. So it's been really successful and exciting, and I really hope we get to present to you. So the co this goes kind of into the college and um, preparation post-secondary. So in addition to Naviance, when we're meeting with the students one-on-one, -on -one, um, outside of doing a piece where it's one-to-one, -one, making sure that they're logging on, making sure that they know that they can log on outside of school, we're even like hinting at the parents what the like, passwords are to Naviance so that they're getting in there too. But in eighth grade, we start with what a high school transcript is, what it looks like, um, 
we talked to them a little bit about, you know, your grades in eighth grade are going to predict what classes you're going to be in ninth grade, and that's what goes on a college transcript, so that's something that starts all the way back then, even sixth and seventh grade, really. Ninth grade, we talk a little bit about what prerequisites they should be taking to kind of open up their schedule at the high school for, now we have the dual enrollment program where they can get college credit. So in ninth grade, they really should be taking some prerequisites so it opens up those classes in, in 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, and that's been a big um, piece for the Churchill counselors is to work with the high school counselors so they know who's on that track to best you know, suit the, the students' needs. We do the interviews, so um, a high school counselor will start with 12th graders. They do a 12th grade interview at the beginning of the year, make sure all their college applications are out, everything's done through Naviance, that they're comfortable with transitioning and so on. Then they move into the 11th graders, making sure that they're doing their college visits, that Naviance is kind of set up, brag sheets are getting out there and completed. And then they go into, last but not least, the sophomores, um, where they're interviewing them and kind of getting to know them a little bit better. The high school counselor has already met their, their sophomores um, when they come down to Church Hill to do kind of a snapshot of what you're going to look like for next year. So it's not the first time that they're meeting them. There's a senior seminar, um, which was really successful last year. It's a day that the seniors get to kind of get a taste of what it's like to be in the military. We have military people come in and do um, an activity with them and then we have a presenter come and talk about whether it's positive psychology or it's um, self-awareness but something to kind of set them up for their transition to adulthood. We have the college visits and we have admissions rep representatives come in. Middlesex County Instant Decision Day is a great day for the students that know that they're going to Middlesex County College. They don't even have to go there. So they come to us and they've been really great with working um, with our counselors to make sure all of our students that are looking to go to Middlesex are set up and they don't have to worry about it. Um, alumni Day is former East Brunswick graduates come back and speak to our seniors about maybe something they would have done differently, maybe something they, they're recommending or something that works well for them. And we have our college fair. So that's kind of a snapshot and me talking very quickly about what we're doing for college and post-secondary preparation. Something that's been important for us as a department is making sure that there's smooth transitions from fifth to sixth grade, from seventh to eighth grade, and from ninth to tenth grade, um, to make sure that, that we kind of have a consistency amongst the building, because it is a little bit unique to East Brunswick. We have our sophomore night, junior night, senior night, and financial aid night at the high school, but to help with the transitioning, we also have um, a parent night for the incoming eighth graders. We have a parent night at Hammershold. Um, the fifth graders come and visit Hammershold. We have all the counselors go down and do presentations to the elementary school. Same thing when it goes to Churchill. Churchill counselors come down, introduce themselves to um, all of the incoming eighth graders for the next year, and they also um, meet with each individual student in snapshots to kind of give a face, a friendly face to a name. So we're doing that throughout um, all the different buildings. Standardized testing, probably the least favorite piece of being a school counselor, but a big piece to it. Standardized testing, we are in support of the building administration when it comes to PSATs and park testing. Um, we're proctors, we help with test anxiety, we help with coping skills, we're teaching students how to kind of compartmentalize maybe a little bit of what the testing is and teaching them coping skills of how to get through it. AP testing, we do all proctoring and administration, so we make sure all of our students have the opportunity to take the AP test that they need. Um, and then the biology exam has kind of moved to, since we've shifted and you sponsored for biology to be in ninth grade, that's more of a Churchill um, exam now. And then we have the military entrance exam. So this is my favorite part. So sources of strength, um, we brought to the district three, four, almost four years ago now. And um, we're just looking for it to really build on our department. It helps with school climate. It becomes the heartbeat of the building when it's done correctly. We had a couple of you come and visit us during our Sources of Strength training, and I hope that um, you can speak to that as well. It is a great, it's great for positive school climate. It brings, um, it brings a positivity to a group that you can't really explain until you kind of experience it. There's um, three components to it. It's part fun for the buy-in of the students, so that the students want to come, part planning, and it's part um, sharing. So it's, 
you're able to break down the walls between the student and the teacher and the adults so that you're able to connect to students in a way that they don't feel like they're snitching or tattling, but they're able to confide in you that they may, may have like worries about a certain student. So it really helps us with um, you know what's going on inside of the classroom with the kids. Kind of gives us a sense of maybe a struggle students are having that we don't know about. Is it the vape pens? Is it things that like as like we get older, we're kind of getting out of touch with. Those students are able to keep us kind of in the loop to what's going on in the buildings. Um, it decreases bu bullying. It's a, it's a gold standard for um, <coughs> suicide prevention. Um, it helps with substance abuse. It um, decreases mental, uh, mental health issues within the school buildings and it decreases school violence. So it continues to grow. We are one of the first schools in the state to really take it and run with it. And this summer we were lucky enough, uh, Nicole Tibbetts helped us bring them here for three days where they did a training. So there's 30 adults in East Brunswick from Hammersfield through the high school that are now trained um, trainers for Sources of Strength. And that is in addition to 52 adult advisors at Churchill that are a part of Sources of Strength. We have we doubled the number at the high school this past year, and now we're including Hammersholt into it. So it's going to be a 6 through 12 program um, that really sets a different tone to a building and really brings like a smile on your face when you're a part of it. And if anyone wants to speak to their experience, please feel free. It was um, it was very nice a couple days. I'd be happy to speak towards it because, you know, this is something that um, the Student Services Committee that um, I've been chairperson of for the last few years, we've talked about the results, we've talked about um, how important it is to creating uh, a good school climate. And, you know, one of the things that I was always kind of concerned about is that, you know, sometimes these programs sound very interesting and we can understand how they could possibly be successful, but they're not going to be successful unless we can draw in the kids. And um, although the children were not there <laughs> for our training program, um, I can personally attest that uh, the sharing part of it is actually very, um, can be very raw, can be very emotional. Um, I definitely felt that folks there were sharing things uh, that I never anticipated they would share and they probably didn't expect me to say some of the things I did as well. But anyway, the overall tone of uh, the whole training program was so positive and um, it felt good as a board member to um, you know, get to know teachers and staff on a little bit different level and I can, especially in light of some of the events that happened in our school district last year that were not particularly positive, I can see that this is a program that's really already making a difference. It has been proven through, you know, randomized studies that it is effective. And uh, anyway, I couldn't be more excited about uh, the prospect of us uh, improving the environment where our kids go to learn. I have a question about, I unfortunately wasn't able to attend the training. Um, one area that I'm still, I'm, everyone is concerned about is this whole issue of cyberbullying. Um, does this program deal with that at all? It does in a roundabout way. So a lot of the students kind of hear cyberbullying and it almost becomes like a jaded kind of conversation where they tune us out a little bit because it's their world. We're not so used to, like I didn't go to school where all my information was online. So I had a very different experience than they do. So they're, um, the way that they view it is a little bit different than we do. What it does do is it really teaches the students to go out and use certain coping mechanisms. And one of them is about having a mentor or going to a positive friend. So it talks about, it's okay to go and say, you know, last night I saw this on somebody's Facebook page and I'm, I'm worried how it's gonna affect my friend. And we've had that. So we have a lot more students bringing down you know, I, my friend's not gonna tattle, they're not gonna snitch on this kid, but this kid put this on Facebook and it's not right. So we're having students come down to not necessarily feel like they're telling on somebody else, but they're coming down to inform us to help support the student that might be on the other end of it. And that's, we've seen a huge increase where teachers are now being able to, oh, she was at Source of Strength. I know that she knows that if I go to her, she's gonna keep my privacy, but she's gonna make sure that something happens or something, there's a follow-up. 
So not directly does it talk about cyberbullying, but it teaches students how to um, and who to go to when they have a concern. Also, if I can, because I, I want to also address something um, Mr. Shaw, Mr. Shaw actually brought up too. The one really different aspect about sources um, that I think everybody was had an aha moment when, when everybody started to get trained was that we don't just focus on the best and the brightest of all the students. So when we're talking about groups of kids that may be cyberbullied or how to handle it or who to go to, we have students in every facet. So you may be good at something but may not be on the star at the, at the school or you may not have something that you're particularly good at but you are very social. And so we want those leaders in the program. So what that does for us is allows many more different groups to get this information out and have supports that they can go to because it's not just one or two groups that we're focusing on. It's yeah, and really it's not just body. adults that we're encouraging kids to go to. There's, you know, a network of peer leaders and, you know, they've been trained. And so, you know, it's really kind of everybody working together to uh, make things happen. And, and I, I'm, I'm glad to hear that and, and I hope that through some of the other programs that the two of you have talked about, um, it's, it's, it's not even just cyberbullying. It's, I know that, that the kids live their lives online and um, I just had a smile when you said when you went to school, you'd, when I went to school we were using tin cans with you know, a <laughs> string between them to call home every Sunday night. Um, I, I still think that with all of the use and the ease they approach social media, they still don't get the basic concept that once something is there, employers are not spending the money they used to spend on people doing background screening because they can do it in their own office and they're going to see the picture of you with the red cup and mm -hmm. fill in the blank. I think that a lesson that we can't drive home enough to the kids is responsible use of social media. That what's important to you as a high school student to put out there is going to come back to haunt you. Not just employers, but I know that a lot of colleges, when they're down to trying to decide whether to accept this kid or this kid, they're going and they're doing a search online and they're looking at their Twitter posts and they're looking at the Facebook posts. And it's, it's kind of that thing that it, it doesn't really hit you that all those, that advice your teachers and parents were giving you was really true until it happens, until you don't get that job because of the picture you posted when you were a freshman in high school, or you don't get into college because of, of your Twitter feed or whatever it's called. And I think that, okay, like I said, the two tin cans with the string between them to call home. Um, I, I think that this is something that we need to incorporate the responsible use of social media without trying to sound like we're, we're against social media, acknowledging it as a part of their life, but making them understand the ramifications. So I, I, I hope that that, and it sounds like it is, and I, I love all the collaborative efforts you talked about between the, the counselors at the different schools, but I think this is something that we can't stress enough. In the individual interviews, when the counselors are meeting with all of their students, that is one of the bullet points that they hit. So they talk about the responsibility of being a part of social media and what that looks like both for yourself and responsibility for like being friends with all these different people <coughs> and what that brings. I, I also had, it's okay, Todd? Yeah, there's another question too, go ahead. Um, I also had a question about um, some of the things you were talking about when you started talking about um, resumes. <coughs> Um, I happen to have been tasked with putting in a college internship program for my company this summer. So I learned a lot about the um, <coughs> skills that college students have when it comes to the resume interview follow-up process, as in lack thereof. Um, incredibly bright kids, <coughs> fantastic academic transcripts 
great extracurricular activities. I would like to see us think about trying to incorporate the art of interviewing, um, follow-up, thank you emails, even salary negotiation, because they will start doing it as an intern. And it used to be, oh, uh, you intern before your senior year. Well, now the freshmen are applying for internships for their sophomore years. Everything trickles down. And I think that if we could send off our kids better prepared than what I witnessed this summer, and again, these were absolutely terrific, terrific kids, but there is an art and a skill to interviewing, as we know as adults, and the whole follow-through, follow-up process. And I, I would love to see us integrate some of that along with the resume building skills, because they go hand in hand. Also, it will serve them well on their college interviews, because those have become more and more similar to job interviews. That's a skill, yeah. Mrs. Lex. Um, here's my question. Michael, I'm sorry, it just blew out of my head. Um, oh no, you said this has been three years we've had in the district? This is, this will be the fourth year. Fourth year, mm -hmm. okay. So when do you expect, and I know you said there are about 50 or so counselors and now we have 30 more that we're adding to that group and we've expanded the schools. Is this something where in other districts or throughout the country they've proven that within X amount of years you start to see a decrease? Because mm -hmm. one of the other areas was the, um, the substance abuse, because that's an area which I know seems to be on the rise. I didn't know if this was something that we're going to see. Maybe it takes three years, it takes five years. Is there any proof? They, ha they have, a, they have a, actually in the trainer's guide that they right. hand out, they have yearly review. Okay. So it goes what it looks like the first year, you analyze how it went, what you should do better the next year, goes into second year, third year, fourth year, and fifth year. So Churchill was the first year that it really came out into. Okay. The high schools had it now, um, they're on their second year, so and now Haversholm it's its first. So the rollout is going to take a little bit longer as we see it throughout the years. Um, and Churchill has the 52 adult advisors. That doesn't include the ones at the high school or at Hammersholt now. Oh, okay. So that's just at, at Churchill. Um, the high school right now, I think we're at, it's with the trainers from the summer, we should be around 27 at the high school. Um, but yeah, it has, it has every year how you reevaluate what you're okay. looking at. And um, really it focuses on, and you were there, that positive piece to it. So it focuses uh, yeah. on not necessarily how we're gonna c combat this piece, but how we can focus on coping skills and get the word out. So as the years go on, that's where the decrease starts to happen. Um, and it's ha in North Dakota, one of the schools he was talking about, it's, they are tripling in size in North Dakota and they have numbers that show, I don't have it in front of me, I should, should have brought it with me, but they have numbers that show that their suicide rate went down, yeah. the instances of mental health um, illnesses went down, um, students struggling after they leave high school, having more coping skills and handling you know, the stresses of life, that, they're, that has improved for them. So there's a whole bunch of different pieces and components. That it, was, it was very positive and I'm so thankful that you opened it up to us and let us be there. Um, and the staff, I, I was, you know, Mary said, I was very impressed with our staff. I mean, we've always been impressed, but this was a way that you did feel you got to know people and their vulnerabilities and people were so open. Um, the good and the bad. I mean, I did the one exercise with the sharing, whatever one's best thing was for the summer, and you know, you had all sorts of interesting things. You had people getting married, you had people, you know, going to the supermarket. But it was just, it was so, but it was kind, it was, it was great. I also liked that one particular slide where you showed the students with the pockets, and we talked about, you know, you, the, the kids on the periphery and which ones. It kind of shows you who you have to worry about. It's the ice um, yeah. Yeah, and you know, so it was, it was a great program. I'm hoping this is something I guess each year we're going to train more and more people. Is that the idea? Well, it, now we have 30 trainers so. that are within the district, so we don't have to pull in um, sources of strength to come back again, but we can do it ourselves, which yeah. is and that's what the, was the, so great about right. this. We have so now we can produce amongst ourselves, which was huge. Yeah. It's a really big deal. No, it's exciting. It's, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> we're hoping that it continues to snowball with more people seeing the positive effects mm -hmm. and more people wanting to get involved and more students wanting to get involved. 
and that would be the ultimate goal. So I think kids will respond well to something that gives you the ability and the, the drive to be positive. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think that would be great for them. I have to give my annual shout out for Naviance. <laughs> I love Naviance. This is great. It makes my heart. I know my heart is very excited. Oh my God. Um, I, I do this every year, but I urge parents to embrace Naviance. My older son graduated in 2006. We didn't have Naviance. We had folders on the dining room table and self-addressed, mm -hmm. self-stamped envelopes and getting teacher recommendations from separately and signing up with the college board to get your test score sent and it was, it was... One stop shop. Oh. And then in 2013 my younger one graduated and we had Naviance. Naviance is, uh, yeah. Naviance is, is wonderful. Naviance, it's, I, I love the way it's used from sixth grade on. But man, when you go through the college application process, you will bow down to Naviance every day. So I just urge parents to learn about it, take any tutorials we offer about it. It is a fabulous, fabulous tool. I hope Can the good people from Naviance are not watching this right now. <laughs> <laughs> I said I hope the good people from Naviance are not watching this. Our, our price just went up. That's yeah. right. Our price, yeah. Yeah. Our price of Naviance just went up. It's not it's that okay. good. <laughs> and there are competitors. There are other like things things. like Naviance. Celebrities yeah. say they like a car, they get that car. No. We should be getting free Naviance. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. free Naviance. <laughs> She's using For a competitor pen. that gives better prices. There you go. Yeah. I don't know if there is one. Okay. Um, I'd like to show you yes. this a little um, video from Sources of Strength that gives you kind of, um, they speak better than I do and slower, they're from North Dakota, so they're a little bit easier to understand, but it just kind of gives you an understanding of where it came from and they give you a little bit of data. Sources of Strength is a program that uses peer leaders to go out and try to change social norms and climates across whole populations and spread messages of hope, spread messages of strength. You gotta love this guy's voice. Sources of strength, we don't view our peer leaders as junior psychologists or counselors and send them out to fix all of their friends. We really ultimately view them as these agents of social change. And we take what we call a social network approach, that we all exist within these social networks and we know that things can spread through a network. There's a lot of emerging science on this. What we've learned is that positive things can spread through a network. Things like hope and resiliency and strength and connection and trust towards adults can spread through a network. And so we really view our peer leaders as these agents of social change, as the patient zero of an epidemic of health, of a contagion of strength within their school and community. I think Sources of Strength is unique in the fact that it's um, a positive program. It's uplifting. It deals with the strengths that you have around you instead of the negatives. Sources of Strength is in the model aimed not only at addressing the needs of students who may be in crisis to, to help connect them to natural as well as formal helping resources, but it's also to increase the number of students that have adults that they're in connection with because we know that's an important protective factor. What are things that kind of give you strength who are people? What are your favorite activities? Source of Strength has peer leader teams going at middle school, high school, college, university, community, cultural groups as well as faith-based groups and these peer teams can go out and spread hope, help, strength messages and they adapt those messages to kind of fit their culture. Research has shown that we've been able to break down codes of silence, increase perceptions of adult support, increase help-seeking behaviors, and enhance protective factors associated with reducing risk across a whole school population. Since we started Smith and the Strength at our school, we're definitely all more connected and more encouraging to one another and it feels more like a family rather than just a body of students. The Sources of Strength program would be great for any school, any community. It uh, creates a caring environment that allows people to feel understood. I just can't say enough good about it. It supports reaching out, it supports, it, it's against isolation, it's about healthy, help-seeking behaviors, it's about life. The other thing I like about it is, is we do get assistance on this from outside. It's not all completely in here. We've got people coming in and helping us periodically throughout the year. You need some of those different voices from time to time. It can't always be the same people saying the same things. I think it's good when, when our students and our staff hear it from people outside. Sources of Strength isn't a one-shot assembly style program. It's designed to be implemented over the course of a school year and ideally multiple years because that's really when we start to see systemic culture change happening. 
a program that can address the, the priorities of, of the schools, their primary educational mission, as well as uh, the mission of, of enhancing well-being of students is, is an important and a wise investment for communities to make. So the Scott uh, Lo Murray and um, Mark Lo Murray, they are they are who developed the program. And Mark was the person who came to East Brunswick, so he came here to um, roll this out to us. So that was um, kind of a nice opportunity to have him come back, because I I met him when I first did my training, and he's as calm, yes, and soothing as he ever was. <laughs> I calm. wish I could speak that way. <laughs> Here's some of the pictures from the past year of um, sources of strength at the high, the high school level. So this year we had students from the high school go down and speak to all the elementary schools about how they overcame certain things in their life. So they're not going there to shock you with their terrible story about how awful their life is, but they go there to say, this is what happened to me. But because of my positive friends and my family and my spirituality, I was able to over, overcome it. So it talks about how they were able to come out of some of their situations to give those students the verbs and the kind of the coping skills that maybe they don't know about yet at fifth grade. Um, that, <laughs> this is some of the other things that we've done. Um, we've raised a ton of money. Um, part of the Source and Strength Wheel is generosity, so we're teaching our students when you give back, how that gives back to you. So we raised money for Reads Across America this year, a Wounded Warriors Project. Um, they were able to help with um, cancer research, and we donated a ton of money, and um, all based on the students. What's nice about this, it's not teachers walking in going, okay, this is what we're gonna do. We sit there and we allow the students to come up with all their ideas, and then we're the people in the background going, I'm can you, uh, can you get this? Can you make this happen? Ms. Tippett, can you? So it's able to kind of, we are the ones that reach out to get the support that they need to implement their own projects. So there's ownership. There's, um, and you're watching students from all different piece, parts of the building. So you're watching the goth kids talking to, you know, the um, Egyptian Orthodox kids who are talking to um, our students that are in temple. That, and so it mixes all these students that you not, wouldn't necessarily think would mesh and they're beautiful together and we even have some teachers that'll come back and go really that kid he only gets like c's yeah really that kid he's a mayor he walks around the building and he knows every single janitor's name he knows everybody that works in the kitchen he knows the principal the principal's calling him by name so we want all of those students kind of to come together and you watch something really beautiful happen when you bring all of those kids together um <coughs> louise one of the other things i found um interesting is that some of the people that were there to assist Mark with the training, they were not necessarily teachers or educators. I mean, some of them came to Sources of Strength um, through widely different experiences. I was thinking in particular, I think her name was Amy, who um, came in through uh, youth detention centers, mm -hmm. and Mark was talking about um, working with uh, Native American groups. Different tribes. Mm -hmm. So anyway, you know, it's wonderful for us that this is a program that can work within an educational environment, but you know, there are the, the principles of positivity and learning to rely on each other, um, you know, they can be generalized to a lot of different mm -hmm. areas. Just a couple more pictures from this past year, some of the things our students did. So obviously I'm very excited about Source of Strength. So that's something that, you know, us moving forward, our vision for the next couple of years is to continue bringing that positive psychology and positive uh, positivity to the buildings where we're not so much focused on the shock, trauma, scared version of teaching students, but we're teaching them the coping skills that they may need to get through those moments where they're feeling, you know, anger, depression, they're feeling anxiety. So it really is about teaching them coping skills that they're going to need and they're going to use, you know, all along the way through school, through college, through careers, and you know, even as adults. Um, we're looking at expanding the mentor programs. They're in all of the schools now. But um, we're looking to continue growing that because having a student be able to have a positive adult in their life, that can make a difference. Um, and that's, you know, that goes back to source of strength as well. We're um, the Superflex program. Um, I have 
two children in the district and they come home and they tell me they're using those verbs and it de definitely gives them a voice to some emotions that they're not really sure how to identify with, um, but it gives them an, a way for them to be self-aware of some of the emotions they're feeling and make it feel tangible that they understand it. Um, the secondary level, we're still, we're really working on um, having a cohesive 6 through 12 counseling curriculum where we're building upon what each different grade is doing as opposed to kind of doing things separately and the same thing across the district and the elementary schools. We're doing a lot of getting everybody together at different points. Um, we're going to be doing counselor universities where you know the Hammerschold counselors will be teaching what they do on Navion so the high school counselors are well versed in that and um, making sure that we kind of as a district become become even more cohesive than we are already. Um, we're continuing to expand on the school safety teams and making sure that we're up to date with the most present information for HIV programming and for you know drug alcohol prevention. A lot of it has to go back to staff development, which we're very lucky as a district that we have so much. And then this year for Hammersfield to have sources of strength, it's a, it's a difficult program to roll out in its first year, but we're excited that Hammersfield will be having it this year. And I know that the teachers will love it once um, it really gets rolled out there. But um, it's really exciting. We have a lot of really good things that are happening. Um, I hope that when we do do our training day that um, we can come back and have students come and talk to you about their experience. And a couple of years ago now, we had students come and talk about Source of Strength. So I hope we're able to do that again this year. Um, but it's been, it's been fun. It's been good. Thank you. Great report. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thank you for having us. All right. Next is yes. <laughs> the, I'm going to combine the public hearing on school level self-assessment for determining grades under the Anti-Bullying Act of Bill of Rights for the period ending June 30, 2016, and the good of the cause for the public, where members of the public are invited to express themselves on school-related matters of concern and reminded that comments are limited to five minutes and that individual student and staff issues should be addressed first with the appropriate administrative <coughs> staff. So anyone wishing to speak at the public hearing or the good of the cause, please come forward. 